So today I'm going to look at uh, work and energy, and energy is to find the capacity to do work. Okay, it could be that you store energy like in your, by compressing a spring, or taking an object and lifting it up off the ground, which would be both forms of so-called potential energy, the ability to do work. Okay, and work would be defined as just applying a force over a certain distance. So like if you took a spring, you compressed it and you had an object connected to the, the end of the spring. Um, when you release the spring, you actually apply a force to that object and cause it to move, okay? Potential energy. So potential energy, like I say, you, could, you can think about this in terms of like, it could be electrical energy, it could be elastic potential energy stored in a spring essentially, or elastic band, um, or gravitational potential energy are, are um, common ones, common forms, okay? Uh, we also have heat, heat energy, which we will talk about that later on. Okay, so for potential energy, here's an example with a spring. And you take a spring and either you stretch it or compress it. The amount of potential energy stored in that spring is just related to it by one half times K times X squared, which is how much you stretch it or compress it. The K is very specific to a specific spring. And this is in typically in uh, newtons per meter, or in the USCS system, it'd be uh, uh, pounds per foot. Okay. All right. So we also have gravitational energy. So if you take an object, lift it a certain height off the ground, some reference point, and you know, you think about it, we have to define a reference point for that first. And you've added essentially potential energy, which is just going to be how much the mass times uh, gravitational acceleration times how far you've lifted it up off the ground or off your reference point. Right. The next is we have kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is the energy in an object um, as a result of its motion. Okay, And the kinetic energy of an object is going to be one half the, times its mass times its velocity squared. Okay. And we'll see that. We'll see that relationship. And one of the things we're going to look at is like if we have an object um, and we lift it off the ground and we drop it um, and it heads towards Earth or wherever planet, I guess. Earth is the one we're on. Uh, is that as it travels down, it's going to increase velocity. It's going to increase, increase, increase. So its kinetic energy would increase as the object's heading toward the ground. But its potential energy would decrease. And the overall energy of the system would be maintained. So you lose some in kinetic, you lose some in potential energy, you gain in kinetic energy. Don't need that. Okay. Internal energy, and this is another one we're going to look at. And this is could be like heat stored in it, kinetic energies of the of the molecules. Okay. So this will be in the thermodynamics section. Okay. So what we could say is that the total energy of a system, we would sum up the potential kinetic and any internal energy. So this gives us like the whole, all the energies associated with it, okay? Potential energy, kinetic energy, plus the um, internal energies, all right? And we're gonna look at problems with that. All right, so now looking at work. Now another definition you can think about it is a form of energy to transfer across a boundary of a system, okay? And we're gonna look, you know, a lot of this will be um, when we start to talk about thermo thermodynamics, um, it could be that, you know, uh, it's an internal combustion engine like in your car and you're doing work where you're taking heat and, and converting it to like mechanical energy, the piston moving up and down, which eventually translates into uh, work to move your car, right? Okay. Uh, so you could define the boundary of being like, you know, the cylinder, let's say. Okay. Okay. First, we'll start with mechanical work. So this is the definition I had previously talked about. Uh, the work uh, that you do an object or an object does is just basically the force times its distance. Okay, So you apply a force over a certain distance, and then you come up with um, the total work done. Okay, Here's the integral form of this. Um, this is, we're not going to do integration in this class, but we're going to have like constants. So if the force is not a constant, meaning that it changes, you know, as a function of time or it changes as, you know, the motion moves as the uh, object moves um, 
then you would have to do something like this. So this is kind of outside of the scope of this class. We're going to have just constant forces. Okay. The next one is gravitational work, right? So you do work, in this case, doing work to lift the car, essentially, from this point to this point, okay? And the work done, or the work, in this case, work uh, by or against gravity, is going to be, um, here's my mg, and here's my z2, which is the final position, and here is, like, the initial position, and that's the total work. And if you look back, if we take a real quick look back to our gravitational energy essentially it's the same equation here right this is the potential energy and here is the work done okay so this is against or by or against the gravitational force okay the next one acceleration work right so you're at a certain velocity some work is done on the car or by the car to increase the velocity from you know some initial velocity and you end up with some final velocity. So um, this is the work um, due to the change, or, or we say acceleration work for the change in velocity from one velocity to another, okay? And when we start to look at like work, uh, work energy equations, we'll see there's a balance, right? It's like this is also looks very much like our change. This is essentially our change in kinetic energy, right? We've done work on an object. We've changed its velocity uh, or this kinetic energy we could say from um, what it is it when it's going at 10 miles per hour to what it is at 65 miles per hour, okay? And essentially, you know, it's the, the engine that's done the work. Okay, so boundary work. This is when we'll get into this more when we talk about uh, uh, thermal dynamics, okay? And in this case, we'll look at, um, this is work associated moving a solid boundary. So it's like, you know, maybe you have an explosion in here or something or some gas that, that um, inside this cylinder, uh, oh, so this this case it actually has does the, the uh, cylinder doing work compressing the gas, right? So you apply some force over some distance, and it's done some work on the gas. Okay, we'll look at this in thermodynamics next section. Shaft work. So this is work done by the rotation of shaft. Okay, and basic idea here: if you look at this equation, you know you'll see oh the, this is just two pi, which is essentially you know at times of the radius, which is, there's a relationship here. Um, that's a, N is like the number of rotations, and this is the uh, the torque, essentially, here, okay? And now it tells you how much work is done. Torque being just force times distance. So this tau is just force times distance, and N is like how many times it's rotated around. Uh, spring work, same thing. We're looking back, and hey, it looks like the potential energy equation. So essentially, you have some initial stretch here, represented by x1 squared, and then a final stretch. And this is the work that is done um, in deforming the spring. So whatever you've done to deform it, in this case, stretch it. The work we've applied a force um, and gone over a certain distance represented by the difference between essentially the difference between these two so we have some initial uh work that's done to stretch it and then we've got to a final position out here x2 which is our final um uh, point okay so this is the difference between the two a force here to stretch it this far and then a force to have to stretch it that far okay so that's good good for now and we'll take a look at some examples